God foreknew, he also predestined them to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified.
likeness of his son, and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren.
Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Church of Praise uh, Sunday service. And uh, we welcome those who are physically here and those online, wherever you are, whether you are at the moment are occupied. But and as you tune in, we pray for the Holy Spirit to just begin to minister to you. Let's, may I invite each and everyone here to just stand up and rise as we come to worship the Lord. God, we just want to take these few moments to come into your presence. Lord, we begin to think of your wonderful grace that has worked in our lives, that you sent your Son for us, dear Father. Even as before we start, we want to prepare our hearts to come before you, dear Lord God, to worship you. Liberate us, dear Father, Lord God, from whatever is stopping us to fully realize our potential in you, dear Lord Jesus. Oh God, you are so good. We just want to sing out our praises to you, dear Father, Lord God. From wherever you are right now, just take this time to express your thanks, your gratitude to him. Lord, receive our thanks, dear Father. Lord. Oh, Jesus, we come before you right now. Jesus, you're the Son of God. We want to pray. praise to you we thank you for what you've done hold us Lord hold us Lord oh Jesus let our spirits rise let our spirits rise as we come before you now. Oh, liberate us, we pray. Spare our vision to see. You now. Oh Father, let each and every heart here, for those who are tuning in, let them experience the reality of you, dear Lord God. Touch each and every one of us, for you formed us and you know us, dear Lord God. That's why we can come before you and we want to come to worship you, dear Father, Lord God. And dear Lord God, this day we want to see you. We uphold this time to your name, dear Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to, let's ascribe our praises to the Lord right now. Before we do that, um, uh, let's, let's sing, uh, let's read together Psalms 29. Sorry. <clears throat> ascribe to the Lord. Let's read it together. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Let's jump to verse 10. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as King forever. The Lord gives strength to His people. 
the Lord blesses His people with peace. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Let's sing. Let's give the Lord our praise. Great is Your faithfulness, O God. You content with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Oh Lord, we give you praise. And justice, God. Amen, Lord. You use the weak to lead the strong. Amen. You lead us in the song of your salvation. Yes, Lord. And all your people sing along. Yes, Lord. Remember your Your grace is indeed sufficient for us, dear Lord God. That's why we come before you to praise your name. Hallelujah, dear Father, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Lord, I stand in the midst of a multitude of those from every tribe and tongue. We are your people, proud by your dead blood. Rescued from death by your love There are no words good enough to thank you There are no words to express my praise But I will lift up my voice 
and sing from my heart with all of my strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Lord, we stand by grace in your presence. It's because of you, dear Lord God, we can stand in your presence, dear Father Lord God. We have been cleansed, dear Lord Jesus. children called by your name. Humbly we bow and we pray. Release your power to work in us and through us Till we are changed to be more like you Then all the nations will see your glory revealed And worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb Hallelujah Hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand Every tongue, every tribe Every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are Lord of all. Every knee, and every knee shall bow. Confess that you are Lord of all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand. Every tree, every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. God, indeed, you are greatly to be praised. You are greatly to be praised, dear Father, Lord God. And we can come to you, dear Lord, because you are the great King. Oh Lord, help us to always know you and always to approach you. Lord, let us not depend on ourselves, for our wisdom is finite. So we come before you and entrust ourselves to you, dear Father, Lord God. Oh, I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. Leaning on the 
the things of this world If I rise or fall If I stand at all I am leaning on your everlasting arms What a fellowship What a joy divine What a priceless gift I am yours, you are mine Let my restless soul be still and know I am leaning on your everlasting arms Sister singing And mercy And mercy is new to the
my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. God, you're so
personalize it and exalt Him where you stand right now. Sing it to Him. Sing it softly right now. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Father, Lord God, we ascribe greatness to your name, dear Lord God. We exalt your holy name. May your will be brought to us, dear Lord God, and may we respond to it, dear Father, Lord God. We thank you, dear Lord God, for you've given us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, and to always refresh us. Lord, we always look to you, for you are the one who refreshes our weary spirit. May we not look into the things of this world and to not look at the things by the side that distracts us, but may we focus our vision and our perspective on you and on your kingdom, dear Father, Lord God. For you give us, all of us, your sustaining grace. Even as we draw near to you, dear Father, Lord God, we pray you draw near to each and everyone in this place. Lord, and you work out your will for us in each and every one of us, dear Lord God. Lord, to you be glory, to you be dominion, to you be the power. And Lord, let our responses, dear Lord God, is always to obey and to walk in your will, dear Father. We give you thanks, we give you praise, and all your people in this room will come to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. church welcome to our sunday worship and we thank the lord for our worship team we praise the lord for the message of the songs and for lifting our spirits and for giving us the chance to worship once again and we would like to welcome our newcomers we have two newcomers we have uh, jerome and elsie wong Okay. Welcome. So we would like to request you to please stand so that we can acknowledge you. And we also would like to welcome our um, online worshipers. If you are new worshiping with us today, type I'm new in the comment section so that we can also acknowledge you and um, welcome you. Okay, announcements. So for those, uh, for our offering and online giving, Members can give via um, Do It Now or Direct Bank Transfer or Touch and Go. And information is on our screen. And don't forget to indicate the purpose of giving, either for missions, tithes, offering, etc. Non-members are under no obligation to give. Let us pray for our tithes and offering. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for giving us life on earth and the gift of eternal, abundant life in heaven. Thank you for your sustaining grace, provision, guidance, and protection upon us this week. You are our good, faithful, and generous Father, so we would like to offer you our tithes and offering this day as our act of worship. Bless our giving, Lord, and use them mightily and supernaturally for your kingdom through our church ministries. Father, as we continue to worship you today, bless your word into our hearts through the sermon that will be preached. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Encourage and strengthen us once again with your special message for us today. 
All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we would like to introduce to you another ministry named Christian Education and Training Ministry through the video that will be played. Shalom Church, it's me again, Hui Ling, here to talk about the Christian Education and Training Ministry. Many may not know such a ministry in COP, but this ministry seeks to help people at each stage of their Christian development to understand the highest potential God has given to them and to dedicate themselves to Christ, becoming more mature Christians. We also hope to help people establish and maintain Christian relationships with families, churches and other individuals and groups and treat everyone as an object of God's love. Our hope is that we are able to lead people to understand and appreciate the Bible more to hear and obey the Word of God. Through our encouragement, the goal is to help people discover and fulfill their responsibilities in Christian fellowship by earnestly participating in local and universal church ministry. Let me now share what we have achieved in 2021. We have had a total of 14 different Bible studies over the past two years many of which were led by great teachers, trainers and pastors. We have also been having Bible study sessions with Pastor Mike who faithfully produces content under the The Bible Explained banner. We hope you have taken the time to truly benefit from his work. In training our people to spread the word of Christ, we also conducted evangelism explosion training and workshop where our people were trained in how to bring Jesus into everyday conversation and take up any opportunity to share about the love of Christ. We have also conducted a number of talks focusing on parenting that we hope will help young adults and dudes with older children navigate the challenges of parenting God's way. Not forgetting the special talk with Brother Jane and Sister Anna Joy about their missions and experience and testimony in Bolivia. Indeed, we are blessed to be able to hear and grow in the teaching and experiences of others. Our plans for 2022? We plan to have more evangelism explosion workshops, more face-to-face -face basic counselling skills workshop, as well as parenting talks. Our prayer for this ministry is to see more members come together to join our hosted Bible studies, workshop and training provided. We also pray for more willing volunteers to serve in this ministry, to be hosts and facilitators, particularly for our online session. Thank you and God bless. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Willing. And next Sunday is our Father's Day celebration, Sunday and Saturday. Yes, yeah, so um, this is exciting. We would like you to invite your friends who are fathers to come and join us. And for all the fathers also, please don't miss our service next weekend. And then we have the Ladies uh, Coffee Morning Fellowship. It's happening on the 17th of June at 10 a.m. You may contact Sis Jane for more information. And we are happy that our refreshments corner are, is now available. And later, you may enjoy it. We can enjoy it once again together. So please join us at the Praise Cafe after the service. And especially if you're new, we would like to um, know you more. And refreshment time would be the best time to do it. Amen. And then college camp. All right. So my daughter is excited for this because she's joining as well. 
and she told me that there's a lot of behind the scenes, exciting things happening behind the scenes about the college camp. So I would like to call in Miss Crystal, Sister Crystal, to tell us more about this uh, camp. Hello Church, we're out here to share more about the camp. So, who knows, who registered already? Okay, I know you're oh, no. a bit last minute, never mind, we understand. So we are here to share with you more about, you know, the team from Rising Up. So, actually, the t the, how we got the team is actually from a Bible verse. So it's wrapped around 1 Timothy 4, 12, which, is, which says, Let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So people are constantly saying, you know, that we are still young, you know, to ease off our stress, you know, the, the stresses and the burdens we face as young, at a young age. But, to, but we have to remember, you know, especially throughout the pandemic, we are constantly reminded that our purpose is to live out for God, our, uh, to live out our God-given identities and to realise the destiny or goal that God has placed us in our youth, you know. So the reason why we are, uh, our team is called Rising Up because we are so encouraged by the adults, you know, that us youth, us young ones, who are also trying to rise up. So this whole camp would we have games, we have challenges, we even have sessions that teaches us how to rise up and how to better use our youth, right, Crystal? Yes, and. Uh, our camp will be held on the 9th to 11th of July. The registration fee per camper is only 100 ringgit. And closing date for registration is in three days. It closes on yeah. the 15th of June. So Put in your calendar, okay? Yes. I know you all uh, <laughs> do best last minute. Yes. <laughs> 15th July, uh, guys. 15th July. And 15th June. 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 Yeah. Okay, you can scan the QR code there to uh, access get access to our uh, Google Forms where you can sign up. And our, we encourage anyone who is 16 years old and above to join us. And um, you can reach out to Esther, me, or even Joseph, our camp commander, for more details. Yes. Can't wait to see you there. See Thank you, you so much. There. Okay, amen. So that's exciting, and my daughter is really excited for that. Amen. Okay, so um, for our COP Care Line, okay, this is a new ministry. Um, if you need, if you have a need that you think the church can help you with, please reach out. Um, you can contact Sister Sharon at this number, and it is non-operational on Monday. But you can contact her on Tuesday, Wednesday until Sunday, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Amen. For our sermon recap, okay, um, last Sunday, Pastor Mike uh, preached about a sermon, a really um, inspiring sermon entitled, Live Expectantly. And I have learned a big word, a new vocabulary, a Greek vocabulary that is Apokaradokia. I hope I pronounce it right. <laughs> Difficult to pronounce. Apokaradokia. Okay, so it's the meaning of this is eager expectation, edge of the seat, anticipation. Okay, it means when I googled it, I actually googled it also to find out more about the word. And the meaning, the, the meaning that came out is anxious and persistent expectation. So, for us Christians, what it means is for us to keep expecting of God's blessings or answer to our prayers and to never stop praying. So, we don't stop expecting, we don't stop praying, we keep knocking, searching, and asking. So, this is, for me personally and for my family, this is um, a big encouragement because we're praying for something really big from the Lord. And this is a confirmation that we must pursue it what we must pursue our big plans and the Lord will bless it yeah 
And the Lord will just, yeah, will listen as we keep on asking and knocking. And based from Ephesians 3.20, that states, with God's power working in us, He can do great things in our lives, much, much more than what we can ask or imagine. Pastor emphasized that our past victories won't compare to what God has in store for us tomorrow or in the future. So that is something really exciting and we can really look forward to. Therefore, we should not stop expecting and anticipating for the best and for what we are praying for. Okay, now today's message is also equally exciting because it is um, entitled Walking in Water, right? If I'm not mistaken, yes, Walking on Water. And our speaker is the senior pastor of Canaan Church, Sri Hartamas, Kuala Lumpur, and an ordained minister with the Assemblies of God, Malaysia. He is married to Sister Karen and they both reside in Kuala Lumpur. Let us welcome Pastor Daniel Lo. Well, praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. Can somebody shout a loud amen? amen? All right. Now you are, I won't say finally awake, <laughs> but you are awake. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, thank you, Pastor Mike, for this kind invitation again. I think the last time I was here on site, three years ago. And then after that, uh, things happen, uh, but it's really a joy. It's like home. I do not know whether it is a sign from God or not. No, just kidding. <laughs> all right. Praise God. Shall we all stand, even as we look to the Lord in prayer this morning? And I want you to, to trust the Lord by faith that something good is going to happen today. And uh, those of you who are joining online as well, you know, we are here together as a body of Christ, even though you are not here on on site, but you are uh, at home or wherever you are, we believe that the presence of God is always with us. Somebody say amen. And today, if you are here, if there is a need in your life, I want you to believe by faith that God is able to meet your need. And this is where we are. That's why we are here in the house of the Lord for two years. Things have happened, but what a great joy that we as a body of Christ, you as members of Church of Praise, it is exciting because you are here without fear. You come to worship the Lord. And those of you, for whatever reasons, you're not able to be on site, you join online. We want to thank you as well because we are all together in unity, recognizing that the Lord is our God, Jesus Christ. He is indeed the Lord, the Master, and the Savior of our lives. Somebody say amen. And let's just look to the Lord in prayer right now. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Our precious Heavenly Father, what a great joy that this morning we can come into the house of the Lord. Lord, we thank you because, Lord, you have given us a brand new day. You have given us a brand new life. And today, as we come before you, sweet Holy Spirit, speak to us. Lord, we recognize you have empowered us. Your anointing this year, your anointing is from those who are watching online, and we depend on you even right now. Father, we pray that you will continue to pour out your abundant word upon each and every one of us today. Lord, we believe together that something good is going to happen. We want to thank you. We commit all this to you and your precious word in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Before you are seated, turn to somebody and say, you will be blessed today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, now you can go home. I thought I heard somebody say amen. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, praise God. Once again, uh, we want to thank you, uh, Pastor Mike. Thank you for this kind uh, invitation again. And thank you uh, for this, uh, the good hospitality. In fact, uh, may I commend uh, your, your church. You know, you have the best hospitality team. Uh, 
We stay in the guest house and uh, we want to really thank uh, uh, Sharon. You know, Sharon, you have a great, fantastic PA. And uh, can I borrow her? No. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and uh, apart from her, the hospitality team has been hosting us. You know, it's fantastic. If I can remember all the names, uh, Brother Lee, Brother Tan, Petula, and then this morning, uh, what a great couple, you know, uh, Margaret and Andrew, and uh, there are others that I know, and really, we want to appreciate all of you, you know, for your generosity, for the fellowship that we have together. Uh, we are the body of Christ, and uh, we encourage one another. We build one another, and this is where it is. You know, I believe uh, the uh, purpose of the hospital team is to allow God to use us in different capacity, and this is where uh, may I commend you once again and thank you very much. You know, both uh, my wife and I uh, feel very at home over here, and uh, so it is really a joy to come over to Johor Bahru. And uh, so, what a great joy. In fact, uh, yesterday, you know, I did mention to Pastor Mike uh, that uh, the the hospital team was so good to the sense that uh, brought us to a very good, all those uh, good restaurants to eat in a sense that I have a very heavy anointing. And uh, so, uh, this morning as well, you know, and uh, so I trust and pray that, uh, that you will continue to uh, thank the, uh, all those who are serving in ministry. Praise God. Are you ready for the Word of God? Hello, are you ready for the Word of God? Okay, this morning I'd like to share with you this very interesting uh, uh, story or narrative entitled Walking on Water. How many of you have tried walking on water? If you try, you will sink, isn't it, right? And uh, none of us, you know, yesterday morning after a nice uh, breakfast uh, with Pastor Michael, with another uh, friend of ours, uh, uh, Pastor Peter, you know, uh, Pastor Michael oh, said, yeah, I will take you for, uh, let's go for a walk. And uh, lo and behold, when we reached there, I saw the pond. So in my mind, earlier, Pastor Michael would know that my message is walking on water. So deep inside in my mind, as you walk along, you know, I saw the pond, I thought he wanted me to walk on water. No, just kidding, you know, and took us to Siri Park, you know, and uh, he's a super fit guy, you know, and he does hiking, and uh, we also uh, do hiking as well. And uh, why? Because uh, we recognize that uh, health is so important nowadays, and exercise is absolutely important. It is spiritual to exercise. Hello, it is spiritual to exercise and uh, God, you know, whenever we read the Word of God, is uh, exercise is one of those areas that, that we must take it seriously. And so my wife and I, we, we do hiking as well, you know, and uh, she is pretty fit as well. And uh, so when you come over to KL, we'll take you to the highest mountain. Just kidding. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Walking on water. Taken from John chapter 6, verses 16 to 24. Well, this is the uh, very popular narrative or story on the miracle that Jesus walked on water. And I've taken from this text in John, if you study the gospel of John, you realize that through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, John actually penned, uh, down seven miracles, specifically uh, seven miracles. The Bible tells us in the Gospel of John that Jesus performed many miracles. But here, He specifically has chosen seven miracles. And here today, I'd like to just share with you this miracle. In fact, in John chapter 6, if you go back and read, John chapter 6 itself, it shows us that Jesus performed two miracles. And here, uh, the first miracle is Jesus feeding the 5,000. I think many of you, uh, you also remember and you know the story how Jesus has fed the 5,000. And we know that it's not only 5,000, but it's more than 5,000. If it includes the women as well as the children. So Jesus fed the multitudes. Here, in this miracle of Jesus walking on water, it is also recorded in the Gospel of Matthew that Matthew in, in Matthew chapter 14 that gives us a, a very detailed version. You can go back and read Matthew 14, 22 to 33. 
a very detailed version on Jesus walking on water in this uh, narrative. And then in the Gospel of Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 52, Mark gave us lesser detail, very interesting, lesser detail. And here in John, John gave us the least detail, the least but that does not mean that it is not important. That does not mean that John has missed out some important issues. I believe, again, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he specifically recorded uh, this miracle and pan it down. And I believe today there are things that we are able to learn. Are you still here with me? Now, earlier in the year, uh, the first miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000, we are able to understand and learn their things about the Lord Jesus Christ, whereby we learn that with the two fish and five loaves of bread, we can trust in His all-compassionate love. We can trust in His all-sufficient grace. And we can trust in His all-sustaining power. We can see that lessons we can learn that Jesus feeding the 5,000. But very interesting, if you go back and read, is that after the miracle of feeding the 5,000, in John, from John chapter, uh, in John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15, uh, the people were very excited. Yeah, and you, you know very well, you know, when you see somebody uh, who is able to perform miracle, no, not many people can perform miracle. If you are able to perform miracle, uh, there will be a lot of people coming after you. There will be a lot of people following you, true or not, right? And here, lo and behold, Jesus has performed the miracle and the crowd, they were amazed. They were amazed. Wow, this guy, they have been following Jesus, running, you know, and following Jesus as far as the miracles that he has been performing so often. That's why the crowd keep on following and the crowd is getting bigger and bigger. They were amazed. At the same time, the disciples, they were also equally amazed at the master. Whoa, I believe the first miracle, that miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 where they are also involved, spreading, delivering, giving to the crowd. They can see miracles right before them. And here is that when this happened, they were also probably tempted, tempted. Wanting and, and together with the crowd, wanting to install Jesus as the king. In verses 14 to 15, uh, you will realize it says, After the people saw the sign Jesus perform, they began to say, Surely, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king. By force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. You know, friends, Jesus is not interested in becoming the hero of the world in that sense. You know, he recognized that the crowd is going to force him to be the king. You are our hero. You are the prophet. You are the one who is able to deliver all our sufferings, all the things that are happening in this world. If you are our hero, you are our captain, you are our king. Wow, great things will happen. And probably, as I say, the disciples, they might be tempted to install Jesus as the king as well. But Jesus knew very well his plan and his purpose on earth is to fulfill the work of the Father. Are you here with me? And he knows. That's why he withdrew himself. And what happened was Jesus told the disciples, Hey, you guys, you go ahead. You go ahead and I will catch up with you. But where did Jesus go? John did not say where did Jesus go. John just said that uh, Jesus just, uh, you know, uh, just left them alone. Uh, but in the book of Mark, we know very well that Jesus went to the mountainside and he prayed, isn't it? And he prayed. And this is where we are. Very interestingly is that there are lessons we are able to learn today in this miracle. Some of you probably today, you are expecting a miracle in your life. You want God to do something to you. And I pray that at the end of this service, that God through the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. That in your prayer, you say, God, I need a miracle in my life. And if it is you today, I pray the Holy Spirit is going to speak 
speak to you. Declare, believe by faith that the Lord our God, He loves us. He knows our needs. Somebody say amen. And so this is where we are. Jesus walking on water. There are three lessons that we are able to learn within the time that we have. But before I go into and jump right quickly into the three lessons, I'd like you to understand first of all that as far as this miracle, Jesus walking on water, this is not a story about Jesus sleeping in the boat and then later the disciples uh, woke him up and then he calmed the storm. Some of you remember that, isn't it? Now, this is not the story. That was the first encounter. Now, this is not the story about Jesus asking us to step out of the boat like Peter. This is not the story that I'm going to share. But this is a story about Jesus walking on water and later getting into the boat. Now, I want you to take note of that phrase, getting into the boat. There are three lessons that I'd like to share with you. Jesus walking on water. What can we learn? The first lesson is be prepared to face the storms of life even if you are a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. I repeat, be prepared to face the storms of life even if you are a faithful follower of Christ. Now, verse 16 to 18, it says, When evening came, the disciples went down to the lake where they got into the boat and set off across the lake of Capernaum. By now, it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. Verse 18, a strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. We recognize as far as this is concerned, the strong wind blowing, the waters that grew rough, simply indicating to us, the disciples, you know, they are having troubles. Now, the disciples, they were with Jesus. In fact, very interesting is that this miracle actually applies only to the disciples. The general crowd did not experience this. But this miracle that later the disciples are going to see is actually meant for the disciples. These are the group of people that are, have committed their life, they have surrendered their life, they have left everything behind and they follow Jesus Christ. And many of us today, we have decided to follow Jesus. That's why you and I, we are here today. And the lessons we can learn here, as I say, is that troubles came upon them as they were traveling. You know, the wind disrupts the efforts to cross the sea. They were in danger as the strong wind was blowing and the waters grew extensively, very, very rough. Troubles, difficulties, hardships are part and puzzle of storms of life, isn't it? Yes. Now, Whenever these things happen, troubles, difficulties, hardships that come upon us, that does not mean that we disobey God. That does not mean that we rebel against God. That does not mean that we sin against God. Yes, we know very well that there are people, there are times where they enter or they, they have troubles in their life because they disobey God. If you think that, oh, it's because of that, what we need to do as a believer, we confess and we repent. But here is that the general understanding is that hardships, troubles, difficulties of storms of life can come to us as well like the disciples. And here, this is where we understand that you know, none of us are immune from any troubles, from any storms of life. We know very well why, because for the two years during this pandemic, you know, whether we are Christian or whether we are not a Christian, whether we are a faithful follower of Jesus or whether we are not, all of us are not immune to COVID-19. True or not? Yes, all of us. In fact, we were, in, we were troubled. Some of you asked the questions, Lord, why? 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 
It doesn't matter. COVID has no preference. It doesn't matter where we are. It will just come and hit us. Storms of life, troubles come to us even if we are a very faithful follower of Jesus Christ. In fact, three weeks ago, we were really sad by the news of the departure of uh, a sister in Christ that we know back from our home, ch home church, Glad Tidings PJ. And we saw the, uh, the news on Facebook, the obituary, obituary stating that she has gone home to be with the Lord. She's only in her mid-50s. We attended the week service, chit-chat with the sister and asked, what happened? You know, it's a shocking news to us because uh, she, she is pretty young in a sense and healthy. What happened? And she said, well, this year, in the month of January, the sister went for a full medical checkup. And everything was fine. It's a clean report. She is well. You know, it's a big relief. When you go for medical checkup, everything is fine. But there are people who do not like to go for medical checkup. Are you one of them? No need to raise up your hand. Why? Because they are fearful something might happen. You know, if I can eat, if I can drink, if I can walk, if I can sleep, everything will be okay. In January, she was fine. Very happy. Then Chinese New Year came, right? And uh, she was very happy. And then in the month of February, uh, she felt intense pain in her stomach. Went for checkup, and lo and behold, they discovered that she has cervical cancer. Fourth stage. Can you imagine? Fourth stage. I think in her mind is very likely is she cannot believe it. Are you sure? January, everything was fine. And now, in February, fourth stage. Now it's June. She passed away three weeks ago, so she did two surgeries. But she did not make it. Just three months. March, April, May. That's it. And we were all shocked. We attended the week service. We know most of them, the people over there. Uh, but this is what had happened to her. And from there, we recognize that, friends, you know, no matter how committed we are, no matter how faithful we are in church, that does not mean that troubles will not come to us. And that is a fine example that we are able to share with you this morning. That these things, we have to be prepared. We always wish that bad things will not happen to us. True or not? Yeah. That's the human nature. None of us want to have bad news. None of us want to have bad health. None of us want to see troubles in life. None. But... That's the reality of life. The troubles, hardships, difficulties can come upon each and every one of us. And if this is the reality of life that we are living, we as a believer, a crucial question is how do we respond to this? When people ask us, why? Why? How do you answer them? When we look into scriptures again in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, Peter tells us one response is, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised. He says, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange happening to you. Do not be surprised. That's the first response. The second response, according to James, who is a very practical guy, in chapter 1, verses 2 to 3, it says, Consider it pure joy. And rephrase it, do not be sad. The first thing is, do not be surprised. The second area, the second response is, do not be sad. And 
this is where we are. We know that even if we are a follower of Jesus Christ, as I said, we are not immune to difficulties and challenges of hardship. Following Jesus Christ does not mean that you and I would never lose our health. Following Jesus Christ does not mean that we will never go through hardships in life. In fact, there are people who have more troubles, more hardships after becoming a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. But this is the first lesson. Be prepared to face the storms of life even if you are a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. The quickly, the second lesson we can learn from this miracle is be at peace. Be at peace for Christ is your ever-present help in your darkest hour of storm. Verses 19 to 20, it says, When they had rolled about three to four miles, they, the disciples, saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on water, and they were frightened. But, verse 20 says, But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. It is I. Do not be be afraid. You know, friends, the Jesus that we know today is always and He will come to us in the storms of our life. And this is characterized by the words of God through Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Somebody say amen. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Wow! What a great comfort, isn't it? And this is a promise. This is assurance that this is where we believe as a believer that the Lord our God will come to us in the storms of our life. Now, why did Jesus walk on water? is to demonstrate and show to the disciples once again as they were traveling. If you remember, as I said earlier, that Jesus was not there, asking the disciples to just carry on the journey first and I will catch up with you guys. And Jesus went to the mountainside to pray. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus, He knows. He knows. His heart is for the disciples. That's where the love of our God is. If you want to believe in God, what kind of God do you want to believe in? I'm sure you want to believe in a big God, isn't it? Right? A God who's able to rescue you. A God who's able to answer your prayer. True or not? And this, the God that we have here, Jesus, who is the Son of God that we represents the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but specifically on the personhood of Jesus Christ. That this person that we marvel, we amaze, uh, that we worship today, is that there are three characteristics there. He is, number one, all. It is, it is, it is, uh, it's all loving. He's a God who loves us, isn't it? And Jesus, when He called the disciples, Jesus, He loves His disciples. He trained them. He called them. He's always with them. And this is His all-loving. And He is all-powerful. And also, He is all-knowing. And the God that we believe in, if He is all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing. Wow! Hey, this is a God that I want to believe in. And here it demonstrates to us that when Jesus was walking on water, the disciples have already seen many miracles. And the last encounter was Jesus feeding the 5,000 using the disciples as well 
Right before them, they see miracles happening as they distribute the emblems or the food, the fish, and the bread. And they have abundance left over. And Jesus said, hey, do not waste this. Keep everything, you know. And here, Jesus is showing them as He walks on water that He is the Lord over nature. That all the law of gravity cannot be against Him. You know, that's why none of us here is able to walk on water. But the only person who is able to walk on water until today is Peter. Isn't it? Right? Peter is the only guy. But it is true, the invitation and the power of Jesus Christ who is able to hold everything. And this is where I believe the disciples begin to understand and remind them that, hey, this is our Master who is in control of everything. And when Jesus came upon them, it is right. Probably there is the comfort and Jesus said, it is I, do not be afraid. It is I, do not be afraid. You know, just three weeks ago as well, just almost the same time with uh, the sister that have gone home to be with the Lord, the former president of Bible College of Malaysia, I think some of you, you know him, that is Pastor Unkoki, uh, he discovered that he has cancer. What happened was uh, when he went for further medical checkup, it is, it is true, it is confirmed, uh, it is uh, cancer and uh, the specialist advised him, you need to do chemo treatment immediately. Five cycles. You need to do that. So he consulted his wife and talked about it because it is not cheap. Not cheap. Five cycles. And, uh, but he knows deep inside in his mind and in his heart, he knows that if he is going to say yes to the doctor, where is he going to get the money? The Assemblies of God of Malaysia, uh, we have this group insurance for pastors. If you apply or if you enroll, uh, it's a very minimum fee. But now it's not minimum anymore because there are many pastors who have health issues to the point that a lot of insurance company decided to decline. Yeah, it's true. So almost every year, you know, Pastor Mike, you know, uh, you know, a lot. Every time, you know, every year asking us, do you want the group insurance? You know, there will be a new insurance company who is going to take this, uh, but uh, you have to pay this amount. But even if you pay this amount, uh, it is much, much cheaper than you, your personal insurance. But anyway, to cut the whole story short, is that, that by faith, he said yes to the doctor after chit-chatting with the wife. He said, yes, uh, doctor, uh, I'm going to go for the treatment. But he doesn't know where, how he's going to get the money because he, he doesn't have uh, personal insurance, medical insurance. The only one is the Assemblies of God. And the Assemblies of God group insurance only cover, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 40000 The first cycle of the treatment is already wiped off the 40000 it's more than 40000 So the doctor said, we are going to get the money. Not going to discourage him, you know. But he said, uh, don't worry. Uh, just do the treatment. But thank God. Thank God that money came in. People knew about it. And uh, he actually completed the first cycle. Uh, but there are still four to go. Uh, but he's just trusting God. Take it one at a time. In fact, he shared in his blog, uh, he's a writer, uh, he shared in his blog, and I'm really encouraged. Uh, he shared that he was uh, admitted to the uh, Beacon Hospital in Kuala Lumpur and uh, getting ready for the first uh, treatment while he was preparing uh, over there, uh, three bedded room. Uh, and there were two in terms of patients as well, both on the left and the right, and he went to cheat check with them. You know, they're all cancer patients. Cheat check with them. And, uh, and then he said, even though he is struggling, even though that he has this cancer inside him, uh, but he just encouraged the two guys or two patients, 
prayed for them. Probably they are not believers as well. But he prayed for them. And it's very encouraging. Even though he is struggling, even though he doesn't know what will happen to him, but he shared with them, he told them, you know, do not worry. Probably it might be in this, like Jesus saying, don't worry. He didn't say, be happy. You know, he just said, don't worry. You know, and he prayed for them. And it's like, you know, that lesson itself, as you read his blog, it is like, wow, Pastor Koki is like, he has, he, he, he's, on one hand, yes, probably he's troubled. But it's like, in, as he penned his, his story, his experience, it's like there is the sense of peace in him, knowing that it's like everything will be okay. God is with me. In the midst of my struggle, in the midst of my pain, I do not know how things are going to work out, but He just take it one day at a time, trusting the Lord and just continue to obey the call of God, share the good news, pray for people. What a great encouragement. Somebody say amen. Do remember Him in prayer and I think this week He's going for His second uh, treatment. But you know, friends, all of us, we go through tough times. And probably some of you here is that there is a place or a time in your life is like the darkest hour. You know, here in this story, this miracle, towards evening, when things are very dark, the disciples are moving and things happen. And there are times in our life that just suddenly we hear bad news. Suddenly, things happen to us. It's like Pastor Corky. You will never imagine faithfully serving the Lord all these years. President, former president of Bible College in Malaysia, actively serving in the Assemblies of God, executive committee, year after year without fail, but no complaints. When things happen, the response is, it is at peace. You know, friends, it is very natural for us when things happen like the disciples if our mind and our heart is not focused, fear will come to us. Fear will come to us. But our God knows. He's all-loving. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's new. It's like Jesus, He came and rescued the disciples. Approaching and walking on water, to simply telling the disciples, do not worry, it is I. It is I. Do not worry. And friends, some of you here this morning, probably there are things happening in your life. Jesus is saying, my child, do not be afraid. It is I. Some of you probably, you have, uh, you have children that are really causing you and uh, cause you to, you know, uh, have a lot of sleepless nights. Jesus said, it is I. Do not be afraid. You know, some of you probably you have health issues in you. Jesus said, it is I. Do not be afraid. You know, there are so many things in our life. If Jesus can walk on water in the midst of storm and His presence that makes a difference, He can also walk with you in the midst of your overwhelming problems. Somebody say amen. You know, think about this. Only an abiding faith in Jesus can conquer fear, resulting in an abiding peace. Only an abiding faith in Jesus can conquer fear, resulting in an abiding peace. We know that when there's a mighty storm and strong wind, the sea will be rough. Similarly, when it rains heavily, it will pour, isn't it? But eventually, the storm will die down. Eventually, the wind 
will come down. And eventually, the rain will stop. Remember the children's song, with Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Some of you, you have been singing that uh, when you are in Sunday school. Huh? Uh, children's church nowadays we call. Why? Because they don't want them to think that Sunday is going to school again. <laughs> huh? With Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Probably the children when they're singing, it's a very nice tune, but they do not know exactly the actual understand. Wow, it's a very deep understanding. It is like, on one hand, it is very simple. You know, uh, when we cry in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. But hey, when we think deeper into this phrase, is it true? Can you apply it in your life? You know, when you are in trouble, when you are facing hardships, when you are really in difficulty, can you really smile at the storm? We can only do this if Christ is with us. So the second lesson, as I say, is be at peace, for Christ is your ever-present help in your darkest hour of storm. And the final lesson today is from this miracle, be pleased to know that no storm can prevent you from fulfilling the plan and purposes of God. Be pleased to know that no storm can prevent you from fulfilling the plan and purposes of God. Verse 21, it says, Then the disciples, then they were willing to take Him, willing, willing to take Jesus into the boat. And immediately, that's a very interesting word, immediately, the boat reached the shore where they were heading. Now here in verse 21 itself, in this text, we're able to see that the moment the disciples took Jesus, took Jesus into the boat, they instantly found themselves at their destination. In fact, Jesus has miraculously brought them from the middle of the sea to the shore next to Capernaum. They did not have to row the boat for a distance of about 6 km to reach home. The lesson we learn from that is that Jesus, He has He's in control and He is able to command over nature something only God can do. No storm can prevent us as well from fulfilling the plan and the purposes of God as long as we are willing to invite and ask Jesus to enter into our boat. And this is where we are able to see immediately. It is like while Jesus will enter into the boat, it's like everything settles. The wind it's no longer rough. The waves calm down. No more storms. It's like everything is so peaceful and it's like there is an autopilot. The boat just carry on the journey. They do not need to row the boat. It's like, right like this, the disciples, you know, they were amazed. They were amazed. When the master stepped into the boat, the boat just carry on. And they've reached the destination. You know, friends, when Jesus is inside the boat, and when we allow Him to be in charge, He will lead us safely to our final destination. We might not know everything in the midst of our journey, but we will reach our final destination. He'll bring us to our next stop, not because of how good we are, but it's because of how great our God is. Somebody say, Amen. If you can recall the life story of Joseph, Joseph, 
None of his brothers like him. In fact, they were jealous from young. So, as a slave. But Joseph, we know that he is faithful. He might not understand everything, but yet, what meant to be evil eventually turned to be good. And all of us know the life story of Joseph. And likewise, David, as far as the experience in Psalm chapter 23, verse 4, it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You know, friends, Jesus did not come to give us an easy life. Jesus came to give us an eternal life. Do you see the difference? Jesus never promised us that He will come to give us an easy life. But Jesus, He promised that He come to give us an eternal life. My eldest sister, I have a big family uh, of ten, five brothers, uh, five guys, five five girls in my family. Plus mom and dad is more than a football team. And over the years, I thank God, over the years, one by one accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, my all my family members, including my mom and dad who have gone home to be with the Lord, all are believers of Jesus Christ. The last, my eldest sister, accepted the Lord after the passing of my brother-in-law. And she is one of those a very simple person. Uh, not much education, but yet she has a heart for God. And she, one day we discovered that, uh, you know, in fact, uh, just, uh, just last year, uh, one of the things that happened to her is there's a, there's a stone in her kidney. And pretty small at that moment. And the doctor said, well, we are going to monitor. Don't worry. In fact, she shared with us. And she said, oh, can you please, please pray for me? You know, I'm very afraid. I'm very afraid, you know, that I don't want to go for surgery. She's very fearful of surgery. I, I don't want, I'm, because the moment she goes to the hospital, you know, and all the tubes, everything, I think uh, she will freak out. You know, and she's very fearful of surgery. You know, pray that, that, that the stone will not uh, grow bigger and we encourage her. Don't worry, keep praying, you know. Let's pray together and let's believe that the stone, uh, it will be flushed out, you know, and from the kidney. And uh, the last uh, medical checkup is that, uh, but sad to say that the stone became bigger. It's 1 cm. 1 cm is 10 mm and it's very big. Uh, because uh, for the tube, uh, for any stone, the most, I think, if the medical doctors, probably the most is uh, 4 cm. You know, uh, even 4 cm is, uh, they encourage probably to take it out. And uh, that's all, because you cannot flush out. Uh, but 1 cm is, is very big. And uh, so the doctor said, well, uh, very likely is you have to go for a surgery. You know, when she heard the word is, oh no, you know. And, and the week uh, before, uh, just another appointment to, to confirm everything. It's like very likely the doctor is going to do the scan again and everything to prepare for uh, her surgery. She shared with us, you know, that uh, please pray, you know, I do not want to go for surgery. And uh, yeah, I said, uh, we are going to pray for you. And, uh, but in my mind, uh, is that at the same time, well... Uh, just be prepared. Yes, we are going to pray, but at the same time, just be prepared. Be prepared. You know, uh, it's also good for you if things happen, and then uh, you will go through. I say, don't worry. You know, God is with you. You know, and if, when once the surgery is done, everything will be fine. And uh, and but we will pray. You know, that probably throughout this week, we'll never know what can happen. You know, what can happen, and then uh, just about uh, a day before. Uh, he's going to see the doctor 
uh, my sister texts me saying that, uh, you know, our big sister, we call big sister, uh, she doesn't need to go for surgery anymore. Jesus has healed her. And then I said, hey, what happened? You know, because one CM is very big. It needs a miracle, you know. Uh, it, it's, it needs a miracle. And Jesus has healed her. Oh, she said is that uh, she, she remembered, you know, uh, learning uh, through online because of pandemic. Uh, she remembered that, you know, communion is very important. Uh, communion, she remembered there is healing in the atonement. And she, by faith, she has, she has her own personal communion. She did holy communion herself a day before she went to see the doctor. You know, we did not tell her, uh, we believe in Holy Communion. We believe by faith that is healing in the atonement, the blood of Jesus can heal us. And she, probably the Holy Spirit just uh, convicted her hearts uh, to partake Holy Communion. So she got, uh, she took a cup and the bread and she prayed, Lord, you know, she prayed, Lord, I do not want to go through surgery. You know, I do not want, probably she might be crying as well, knowing my big sister. She took Holy Communion and through a surprise, when she went for the medical checkup, full scanning, I think the doctor was surprised. The doctor was surprised uh, that it's gone. You know, it's gone. In fact, a few days before that, she didn't feel any pain at all. It's gone. And it confirms that the Lord Jesus has healed her. Hallelujah. You know, and when that happened, I said, Whoa! You know, God, she has more faith than me. <laughs> you know, and I said, Oh, I rejoice and I text her, I call her. I heard that, you know, uh, your stones, there's no more stone in you. And she just said, Yeah, you know, Jesus healed me. Jesus heal me. Jesus heal me. You know, I was so fearful. I, and uh, somehow, you know, I remember uh, one message, uh, Holy Communion is important. So I decided to take Holy Communion and I didn't know, you know, that Jesus healed me and he's so happy. You know, so the doctor said, oh, in fact, he said, the doctor was surprised. The doctor checked, the, the, in fact, her record. The doctor said, I don't know what happened, you know, uh, but the stone is no longer there. You know, I don't need to do surgery anymore. You know, there must be something happen. There must be something happen, but uh, good for you, you know. <laughs> good for you. And uh, so we really want to thank the Lord. Friends, in conclusion, I know time is catching up. In conclusion, very important. I think one crucial question is this. As we end, are you willing to allow Jesus Christ to enter into your boat. That boat represents your life. That boat represents my life. You see, there are many people today who have seen so-called Jesus walking on water. There are many people today, including believers of Jesus Christ, who have seen Jesus performing miracles. Jesus is not here physically, but we have seen Miracles happening in church, true or not? We have seen people fall under the power of God. Even personally for me, we as pastors, we have lay hands and pray for people, people get healed. Miracles happen, we have seen people get healed by the power of God. But sad to say, there are many, there are many who have not allowed Jesus to enter into the boat. And sometimes we as believers, though we worship the Lord, we raise up our hand, you know, we say Jesus loves you, but there are occasions in our life we do not allow Jesus to enter into our boat. And we have to ask that question. Is it only when trouble comes? Is it only when we experience hardships? Is it only when difficulties come to us, then we invite and willingly ask Jesus, I need you, come into my boat, come into my life. What about other times? Is it 24-7 that Jesus is always in our life? Or is it just occasionally? Jesus, step into my boat. Step into my boat. But other times, Jesus, can you just leave my boat? 
Friends, whatever it is, I believe we have to think carefully. God, whatever it is, the Lord Jesus, He knows our heart. Even in our shortcomings, even in our weakness, Jesus will never abandon us. Somebody say amen. He will never abandon us. I thank God for He is indeed all loving. And today, if you feel that, you know, uh, because of something you have done, you feel guilty that Jesus, you know, never answer your prayer. No, no. That is the lie from the devil. He loves you. He loves you. He just wants to, he's waiting for you. Are you willing to invite me into your boat? In fact, I penned this phrase as I was preparing this message. Troubled hearts can turn to peaceful hearts when you surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Troubled hearts can turn to peaceful hearts when you surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus' words makes all the difference in our life. You can have all the best material things in the world, but when things happen to you, who are you going to turn to? Jesus, isn't it? And this is where we are. We are not playing games. Throughout this pandemic period, I think He has awakened many of us. But now when we are about almost going back to normal, some of them is like slipping back into a life that thinking that without Jesus, I'm fine. But I believe the Holy Spirit is reminding us again and again through this miracle of Jesus walking on water. Are we willing to invite and allow Jesus to enter into our boat? You know, when we do so, when things happen to you, you are fearful because of your health. You are fearful because of financial matters. You are fearful because of family troubles. You are fearful because of conflicts with others or siblings. You are fearful because of problems at work. But the question and the answer that Jesus is saying to you today is that do not be afraid. It is I. It is I. Let's just look to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to invite very quickly the worship team to come. As every eyes close and every head bow, I believe God is speaking to us today. And maybe amongst us here itself, and those of you who are joining online, is your heart in trouble? Or are you troubled? Are there health issues? Family matters? Financial matters? Personal struggles in terms of security. Or maybe because there are some difficulties between you and your children. Whatever it is, the Lord Jesus is saying to you today, My child, it is I. Do not be afraid. It's like He has brought the disciples to the final destination. Same thing, the Lord Jesus is able to meet your need. If you need prayer today, very quickly, just raise up your hand and I will remember you in prayer. Is there one like this? You say, yes, Pastor. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, thank you. I see that at the back. Yes, in front. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone? Yes, yes. You know, there are many ways how the Holy Spirit ministered to us. I'm not going to ask you to come in front. Those of you who are joining online, probably in your heart, you say, yes, 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 Lord. Come into my boat. Enter into my boat. Enter into my life so that I will have peace. I have the assurance knowing that you will take care of everything. Is there one more in our midst? You say, yes, pastor, please remember me as well. Yes, thank you for the hand. 
Let's all stand. Even as we look to the Lord in prayer and then the worship team is going to lead you in that beautiful song of worship. Wherever you are, I believe the Holy Spirit is ministering even right now, is moving and is bringing the peace in your heart. And probably Jesus is telling you personally, my child, it is I. Do not be afraid. Remember this phrase. Even when you go back throughout this week, as you meditate and as you pray in your own personal way, you say, Jesus is telling you, my child, it is I. Do not be afraid. It is I. Do not be afraid. Our precious Holy Father, you see hands that have been raised, those joining online as well. You Lord, you know what's happening in their life. Some of them, they have financial issues. Some of them, they have health issues. Some of them, they have family issues or career or work or just trouble in their hearts. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I declare faith. I declare healing. I declare comfort. I declare the peace of God will just come upon them. Knowing, Father, if you have brought the disciples safely to the shore, Lord, you are able to bring us to our destination, to in fulfilling your plan and your purposes. Lord, we know you are the God who loves us because you are all loving, all knowing, and all powerful. Today, Lord, we come before you. Surrender all our brothers and sisters who have responded to you in a very simple way. Lord, speak to them, minister to them, and I declare wholeness. I declare healing. I declare in Jesus' name, victory. God is able to turn your mess into a message. He's able to turn. God is able to turn a victim into victory, trials into triumphs. This is the Lord our God. Let's give Him a big round of applause and say, Yes, yes, I believe. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song. Oceans rise and 
Father, we come before you, dear Lord Jesus, acknowledging you are the Lord over our floods, over the tempests of our lives, over all struggles. Lord, in the midst of the storm, always help us to cast our cares upon your shoulders. You have said, your yoke is light. So, dear Lord God, let us take up your yoke and your promises and continue to lean upon the everlasting shoulders that can shoulder anything because you've shouldered the weight of the world. Lord, let us come to you and always look to you, dear Lord God, for you are that God who takes all our cares, dear Lord God, and you just quieten us in the midst, dear Lord God, and strengthen us, dear Lord God. And that time, dear Lord God, you will empower us, you will anoint us. And dear Lord God, you, dear Lord God, will just strengthen our faith so that we can rise up, dear Lord God, on your wings, dear Lord God, and see that you are in it and we are in it together. Father, we give you the praise, dear Lord God. I hand over the time to our senior pastor. Amen. 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 Just want to thank Pastor for the word. Remember the lessons today. Be prepared to face the storms of life, even if you are a follower of Christ. Be at peace because Christ is your ever present help in your darkest hour of storm. Be pleased to know that no storm can prevent you from fulfilling the plans and purposes of God. God is with us. Amen. And so be not afraid. The assurance of the Lord is very clear today to all of us. Whatever that you are going through, be assured that the Lord is with you. Be assured. Look around you. He is doing some things in your life. He is confirming it. You are, just have to perceive what He is already doing in your life. The Lord assures you, brothers and sisters, whatever that you are going through, He is with you. Peace is not the absence of struggles. Peace is in the presence of the Lord in your life. Peace is a person. Peace is Jesus Christ. So just receive that, the encouragement of the Lord to you. He is with you. Continue your journey. Don't forget the calling that He has put in your life. Some of you here today, you are distracted by what is happening around you. But God is reminding you. God wants to remind some of you today. I have a calling on your life. Don't let what happen, what is happening around you to distract. My favour is with you. When you are fulfilling your, my vision for your life, I will give you that provision. I am with you. I am with you. Continue the journey that I have set for you. Do not be afraid. You have a plan. God has a plan and a purpose for you. And I'm going to just declare this, that some of you have already received it into your life. That His plan is never to harm you, but His plan is to prosper you. And today, God today wants to remind you that plan has not been stopped at all. That, that plan is still in place. That plan is still in place in your life and He's going to fulfill that plan and the purpose for your life through your life. And you just have to continue. He is already showing you certain little things. Don't despise the little blessings God has given you. I believe with all my heart, if you are not already experiencing, even as I say these words, you are, you are already experiencing some blessings, some, some favour, some confirmation from God that He is with you. Hold on to that brothers and sisters I want you to hold on to that and because that is a confirmation of greater things to come for your life that is a confirmation that God is saying to you you think you are alone you are not alone I am in the boat with you all is well do not be afraid I the Lord am with you Amen Amen I just released that word Over some of you by faith today You just need to hear this word Because you're just so distracted by God saying No 
No, don't be afraid, don't be uncertain, don't be stressed, don't be anxious. I am with you. Look around you. The blessings that I bless you. This is my confirmation. I am still with you. I will restore you. I will rebuild you. And this is the word of the Lord for some of you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me just bless you with the benediction today. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in the blessings of God. Go in the favor of God. Don't allow anything to hinder you from God's blessings on your life and through your life. Amen. God bless you. Please join us.